Hi, today I want to talk about the ESP32 and a viewer question how to use the ESP32 and Arduino IDE with BLE UART and periodically connect to Wi Fi and send the data to the cloud. And as mentioned in my QA video, I will use the ESP32 and ThinkSpeak as an example, and we can transmit via an BLE. BLE UART client to the BLE UART server some data and so we can have a whole setup with BLE sensors and beacons and so on. And then we can store the data in the ESP32 some kind of gateway and periodically send the stored data via Wi-Fi to the cloud service and in this case to SyncSpeak. So let us start with the BLE server side and this using the example code from Neil Colburn and also ported to the Arduino ESP32 by Evandro Copercini, if I spelled this correct, and surely with some additional code. So let's start with the setup routine so we can see there's not so much to do in the setup routine. We first initialize the non-votile storage or also called NVS and then we read the storage if there's some data stored in our device in our ESP32 and if so we connect to Wi-Fi send the data and then disconnect from Wi-Fi and if not any data stored or if we have already sent our data then we prepare our BLE service and are ready to receive some data from our devices. And in our loop function we just wait in this case 60 seconds and after 60 seconds our device go to deep sleep. So we have every 60 second a new fresh start and this is because I have some troubles with the BLE classes and maybe there's another stable way to keep your service running but I have not found any other than just every 60 seconds reset the device and just sleep for one second in this case. So characteristics and service UUID, this is part of the UART service or also called Nordic UART service or NUS. And we have the characteristics and one for receiving data and another one for transmitting data. And here's some defines for the non-votile storage, storage size and the name of the storage so we can store different values. And in this case, the store size is just 100 values. You can change this if you like. Then we have our Wi-Fi credentials and you have to set us to your specific Wi-Fi setup. So then we have the connection to the SyncSpeak server. And here in this key example, you have to set up your own API key from the SyncSpeak example. So you have to change three things, your SSID for your Wi-Fi, the password and the third API key for SyncSpeak. Then we have a small function to store values in the non-volatile storage. You can have a look in the code. Then we have a function to read values from the NVS and a more abstract function just to store and string value to the store that we have created. Then we have the different kind of callbacks for our BLE servers, the server callback, the characteristic callbacks and the descriptor callbacks. And we have a function to connect to Wi-Fi as already mentioned in the setup routine just to connect to your Wi-Fi access point. And also a function to switch off the Wi-Fi connection. And we have a function to send data, connect to the ThinkSpeak server, and we have already used the defines and the ports and so on. And then we send out a get string to the HTTPS server. This is all in encrypted form, but you can also use the unencrypted if you want. And after sending our get URL, then we receive a response. Print out the response to the to the serial monitor and just decrease the non-votile storage just by one variable. So we have a loop through all the stored values. Then we make a disconnection and are ready for the next value. So and this is maybe also no, already known from the BLE UART example I done in video about the UART 
robot and this uses already this routine and now we are again at the setup routine so that's already known second we have our ble uart client and this is also based on the examples from neil colbin and also i think ported to the arduino esp32 by evandro copaccini and sure i've just used the example for the ble client and then just configure it so we can use the uart service on the server side from this client software so we can use this maybe as a start for some kind of battery monitoring and so on so we can send all the data from the battery monitor to our gateway and then store the data in the cloud and just have a web server based monitoring system so let's start by the setup routine we just initialize the serial interface then the ble device and just scan for our service from our BLE server and in the loop routine if we have a connection then we connect it to the special characteristics that we have for our BLE UART and after this we just send out our value and I've just do this example so we have to use the text value and then have a more or less numerical value and this just use a random value from 0 to 100 so 100 is the upper limit and this is not included in our random generator and then we send it out to the remote characteristics and after this we go to deep sleep mode and if we have sometimes not reached any connection then after 60 seconds then we also go to deep sleep mode and start the client again so let's have a look in the other functions yes we start or also with the ble characteristics uuid and service id but in this case we need also the service name so in this case i've i've used this ble server and it's called uart service so we can also find this if we use maybe the nordic connect application and just a small change to the ble client example this is already also get from the example the only change i've done is we're not searching for an service uuid we just serve search for the service name and this is the value we also already defined and then if we have found the service we stop the scanning and connect to our server and that's it first we start by looking at the client and the server side by side so we can have a look at the output from the serial monitor and we start the server and see that the server is waiting for a client connection and then when the client found the server and is connected then the client sent the values and as we see the server receives the values and after about 60 seconds the server started again and if we have received some values then the values are sent out to the SyncSpeak server via HTTPS and now in small time lapse just including the client the server output and also as you see the most of the part is the browser output from ThingSpeak so we can see what the server do what the client is doing and how the data is just send it to the cloud service and then we can see that the values pop up in our small bar graph and additional in the gauge So that's all for today. Thank you for listening and watching my video. I hope you enjoy it and also learn something. Please write some comments if you have some questions or some additional information for the video. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and down in the video description you find more information and links to the example files and also to my other channels like Mines, Gap and Bitshoot and so on. I wish you a nice day. See you next time and bye bye.